Hey there, and welcome back. So the new block editor in WordPress, Gutenberg, has been around for over a year now. And while yes, there are still problems with Gutenberg, there are also a lot of positives that have come with it. And one of those is the ability to create your own blocks. Of course, we've always had the ability to create shortcodes, but they weren't visually displayed in the editor, and it was kind of hard to adjust the settings for those unless you knew what you were doing. And while you can definitely argue that creating Gutenberg blocks with JavaScript is you know, just as hard, if not harder, because, well, we're talking about JavaScript, I'm going to counter with advanced custom fields in their block feature that they introduced last year. I have been using this plugin for over five years, and I love it. And when Gutenberg was released, the ACF team released an update to their plugin that allowed people to use PHP and their plugin to create new blocks. And this opens up a lot of things that you can do if you know just basic PHP. If you want a block so you can display information about each member of your team, or you want a testimonial block, or maybe your own custom cover image block, well, you can do that with PHP and ACF. So today, let's create a staff member block and learn more about how we can create new blocks with ACF. Okay, so here we are back in VS Code. Um, and as always, I'll have some starter uh, code that you can use to get started with your own block um, in a GitHub repository that I'll link to in the description below. Um, and you might notice that the code that I'm working with right now is going to be different than what you see in the starter code um, over in the GitHub repo. And that's because this plugin, because um, it will do other things, um, features a lot of object-oriented programming stuff. Um, that's not exactly essential to what we're doing, but it's, it's a programming thing that I like to use uh, just to keep things nice and organized. Um, but overall, the things I'm going to talk about, the functions primarily, are the same whether you use the regular um, regular style or object-oriented programming style. So first off, um, here in this file, I'm loading in the uh, editor side as styles first, and then the uh, front, front end styles. That's all uh, straightforward. Um, where we start to throw in some of the advanced custom field stuff is here. Um, with this function, um, first off, we check to make sure we can actually register a block and make sure that the ACF plugin is active and that, that it's basically the right version. Um, and if so, we're going to uh, bring in this other file that we'll talk about here in a second um, that basically brings in the code for how the block is going to be laid out. And then we register the block through here. Um, and this is ACF underscore register underscore block function. Um, and this function basically is where a lot of the magic happens for us. Um, here, you put your name. So for here, we're going to simply call it staff block. Um, and this is, this is more like a slug, not necessarily the title that you'll see on the front end. Um, and then this is the title that you will see on the front end. And then we can give it a description. And then here, uh, this render callback, um, this is where this other file kind of comes into play. We will call a function from that other file, and this is how it will render out uh, the block that we're trying to create. And then we can also create our own block category so that we can find it easier uh, inside the post. Uh, and we do this through this function right here. Um, that's filtered in through another an action, or filter here, and then the other function we were talking about um, is called through the ACF slash init action. Uh, but talk more about that later. Actions and filters are basically fairly simple. Um, and then for each category you want to add, you just give it a slug and title, and then we just make sure that the slug here is the same as this one right here. And then we can give it an icon um, it's an SVG file that you can create, or you can use the WordPress dash icons. So for staff, multiple people, we would want to probably use... Let me just pop that right there. And then we can add in up to three keywords, um, and they can be whatever you want. 
Um, and that's basically it for this side of things. So now we need to cr create, uh, basically create this file, staffblock.php. Okay, so here we are in that file that I talked about a little bit earlier. Um, this is that callback function that we're talking about. And this is where we'll create the layout for our block. So um, the callback function takes in one parameter, block, and this is um, this has different information about the block itself, such as the ID and the alignment and other things. Um, so we're going to go in here and we're going to create a div and and then we're going to add the alignment class. And that's in case we want to use it wide, center, left, right, full block, whatever. Um, plot with the staff block, it will just be the basic alignment none, but um, there are some cases where you want it to align wide if you have a single column layout. Or you want it to be full if it's like an image or just be like a custom sort of cover image that you're trying to build. Okay, so we'll go in here, and then this block I'm envisioning will have a photo on the left side and uh, the information on the right side. So, okay, so over here on the right side, we have person's title is going to be an H2. And the way we get, if you don't, if you're new to ACF, the way we get our ACF field is by using the field and get field. Um, and for right now, I'm going to leave this blank because I haven't created the fields on the back end of the website, and I need the slug for those fields to go right there. So usually, what I'll do is create the spot for the field first, go and create the fields, and then come back and fill it in with the slug for the field. So that's the title, or that's the person's name. And then this will be their title, email address, and then phone number. And then we'll have a bio for them um, in the proper way, because we'll use uh, ListyWig Editor. What you see is what you get, editor for this. So for this, we'll have to apply our the contents filter and we'll use the get field function to get this field. Okay, and then for the left side with the photo, uh, things are a little bit different. So when we create this field, it'll be an image field and we're gonna get the image ID from the field and we'll use WP get attach, attachment image um, using the ID to get the image and then echo it out. It's a little bit complicated. The more complicated the field, the um, more complicated, obviously, the, the back end is going to have to be. But the good news is, is that we have the layout for our block created. Now let's go in and create those fields. Okay, so here in ACF, we're going to add a new field group. We're going to name it. For blocks now, I like to use block first so that they're all going to be grouped, because they group them by name. So all the blocks are going to be group together, let's call it staff. And then here, you see, basically show if the block is the staff block. So here we go, we're gonna create, first we'll do uh, photo. And then here, image, image ID, there we go. And then name. That's just a simple text field. Email, also just a simple text field. And this phone, that's also a simple text field. And then bio is going to be what's called a Wissibug editor. Um, if you haven't explored ACF, I highly suggest that you do. There are a ton of different fields that make it so much easier. I love the repeater field. Um, I have built repeater fields on my own for other things that I couldn't use ACF for, and man, it is a, is it a pain in the butt.
but with ACF Field, ACF Pro, it's just amazing what you can do without having to write any lines of code. Um, so I just highly suggest that you try it out. And I'm not paid to say that, I promise. I just have used it for almost five years now, and it's absolutely amazing. So, we're going to hit publish on this first, before we forget it. And now we're going to bring in the name or the slug over to our code. So, photos there. All right, there we go. We're going to hit save on that. Save on that, save. Just make sure. You can never be too careful when you're saving things. Okay, so here we are in our page that we want to add this to. So we're going to go down here, and my little dash icon's not showing up. I probably should look into seeing how that needs to be fixed. Actually, I have an idea, but first, let's just get through this part. So here we come. Obviously, because we have nothing in our ACF field right now for the block, obviously we're not going to see anything. So we hit this I switch to edit icon. And now let's see where it's at an image. One of myself. I call it a face reveal, but I've shown my face on my channel plenty of times. All right. And there we go. And when we preview it, oh, that's a problem. Oh, nope, there we go. It showed up. Okay, so here, here's that. Let's hit update. And we'll go to the page. And there it is. And there's no style in here, obviously. Uh, we are having a problem with the bio not showing up. And it's because I didn't fill that in yet. I'll fill that in and reload the page. It also helps to echo. See, us web developers, we're not perfect either, so. You mess something up, that's okay. And there we go, there is the bio. And the, one of the best parts of, that I like about using HCF blocks is that you can change the blocks and not have to do some sort of weird deprecated thing that you would with the other sort of JavaScript stuff when you're building Gutenberg blocks. Um, this makes it so much easier. Okay, so our last step in this process is going to be adding in the styling. Um, now you can use basic CSS, and in fact, that's what I have in the, the starter code up in the GitHub repository. Um, personally, I like to use either SCSS or post CSS. Um, just the structure, um, the ability to use essentially functions and variables inside CSS makes it so much easier to, to do styling and whatnot. So that's what I have mine set up to do right now, um, but it really doesn't matter. So. First, I'm gonna, I find it easier to style them um, just in, in the front end. So for that, I'm going to create a style.scss. And then I'm gonna use a combination of Flexbox and CSS Grid to create the layout that we're looking to do. So first I'm gonna set my styling for um, browsers that aren't using grid but are using flexbox so display flex and now i'll add in my support for this, for the css grid and i'm thinking this will be one third two thirds situation and we won't we can leave in the road the row gap okay so now we'll go in uh, so with the way i have it set up if you're doing this in pure css you're fine, hit save, and then reload the page. But because I'm doing it sort of a combination of the ACF and the Gutenberg way, I need to go in here. Okay, so then I import import that style sheet, basically. And then I come down to my terminal and should be able to build it out. Okay, there we go. Baby. Yeah. Okay, yeah, there, let's compile our CSS. We should be good to go. Now refresh this page. Yep, something happened. And there we go. Now we have our layout. The left side, right side, looks pretty good. There's additional styling I will probably go back in and do um, to get this ready f you know, for the actual internet. Um, but for now, that works for us. 
And then finally, we want to be able to see that over here so that we can get a good idea for what the page is going to look like um, without having to go between the front end and the back end. So we'll go back in here, create a new file, call that editor. Not. Basically, we're going to copy all of this to right there, hit save on this, and then import it, and it runs. Okay, so now it's all saved. We come back in here, some point, and there we go. Um, it's a little bit different. The width in here is different than the width here, which is causing a little bit of issues. But nonetheless, we have our block, and we've done it through ACF fields. We haven't touched any lines of JavaScript. Um, all we do is we have ACF, some PHP knowledge, um, and you can do this for stack blocks, testimonials, you know, custom cover images. Basically, ACF blocks opens up a whole bunch of what you can do. So, you know, just try it out and ideally, hopefully you have a development environment where you can just go and you can make mistakes and you can break it and reset and try it again. So there you have it. If you follow this tutorial all the way through, you now have a functioning staff member block that you can use anywhere on your website. And you can start building other blocks if you want or need to. Again, feel free to head over to the GitHub repository to get started. If you have any questions about Gutenberg blocks, ACF, or anything like that, be sure to leave them down in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer all of them. And if you want more WordPress tips and tricks, be sure to hit that subscribe button. But until next time, happy WordPressing.